Hello, welcome to day two. I am here today coming from StreamYard, so I'll be able to see all of your comments. And um, I'm not able to always see who is commenting, but I can always see the comments. So that's going to be awesome. I look so much forward to having you here today. Today is going to be an exciting day. Um, please say hi if you are watching live. Um, hello, super excited for day two. Hello from Ontario, Canada. Hello. I love that we always have such a international crowd from all over the world. Um, Julie saying, I'm ama uh, amazing, excited for day two afternoon. Hello. Yeah, it's the evening here already. Hello from the UK. Hi. Hello from Austria. Hello from Arizona. Nice. Austria is just a neighbor <laughs> just next to us. I live very close to Austria. <laughs> so nice. Awesome. Wonderful. So we are going to get started with today. And um, I'm going to do a very quick recap of yesterday. Did you ladies do your homework? Do you already have a few ideas? If you don't have a product idea yet, and if the homework yesterday didn't give you the massive idea yet, don't worry. Sometimes we expect quick wins so quickly that uh, you don't, you're not required to find your ideal product in a in a day. You can give yourself a week or more, right? <laughs> uh, doesn't always happen in one day. But I've seen many of you already got some ideas. So that's super exciting. I've read some of the ideas that you have posted in the group. And really exciting. Really, really cool. Um, awesome. Let me see if I can... Today, the camera angle is not as favorable as yesterday. Let's see if we can. I'm still going to see how to make this work best. Wonderful. <clears throat> so I see I'm reading. Yeah, I'm brainstorming. Yes. And we can all do some brainstorming. Um, finding our ideal product is sometimes going to take a little bit more than one day. But the point is that we want to find something that not only is aligned with our interest. Um, finding our interest is one thing, but the second part is finding the market. And that's something that we were covering yesterday. We were talking about um, that we need to have something that has demand and that has ideally already sales. Um, I'm going to write this down here on paper and I'm going to put it on the wall because on paper I think it's a lot easier to read than it is on the whiteboard. So we want to have demand and we want to see other competitors already having sales. That's when we know, hey, there's a market. I have never launched a product where I wasn't sure that there is a market and this really makes a difference later i'm going to show you my seller account again today has been really exciting from my end i'm not sure if you've seen my posts but uh it's i've woken up to a number far higher than i was expecting and a reason for it is because i have only products that have a market i don't have any random products in there i always look to have my passion be combined with what is in demand and what I see can have sales. And that's where the market comes, comes in. Thanks to Amazon, we already can figure out if our competitors are making sales. So if you are interested in any type of product, always look on Amazon already and see if you can see the competitors making sales. That's something we covered yesterday. If you were not present today, I'm just doing a very quick recap right now. Watch the replay of yesterday because that's going to be important for today. Now, once we have determined that our product has a market, we also looked at return on investment. It's not a product that sells for $5. 
You don't want to be um, selling products that sell for $5. Ideally, you want to sell products that sell in a range from like between $20 to maybe $40, maybe $50. Ideally, between $20 and $40. Um, you don't want to go too far below because then you need to be selling such massive amount of product in order to make it worthwhile. Um, and you don't want to go too far high either, like products that sell for $100 and more, because that's when you need massive investment capital in order to invest into that product. Um, when we do research, what are the sales numbers you want to aim at? 10K or 20K? I aim for lower sales. So I'm happy if I see sales from my competitor that are above 100 sales a month, 100, 200, 300. That's awesome. That's what I aim for. I don't aim for, and I stay away if I see a competitor making more than 10,000 sales. Even if they do more than 5,000 sales a month, I stay away because I know I'm not competing with an easy competitor. <laughs> I'm competing with what I like to call shark. Um, I'd rather have more products, smaller products, than trying to have like one big, big winner. Um, and that's how I've been um, doing it so far. I've never went for the big product. I always went for the products that uh, have some medium demand and medium competition, but never big, never big players, always smaller players. <laughs> And I'd rather have more products. In the end of the day, it also works out. Um, I mean, let's look at it. I'll share my screen. <clears throat> this is my account. I can refresh it. Um, ah, 6,000 already. Um, for today, it's still pretty early. I think I might be able to even surpass yesterday's day, which for me is quite unbelievable. It's the first time I've had um, close to 20K day. Um, so it was $18,390.35 yesterday. This is, of course, a pretty special situation because we have Christmas going on. So that's um, that has to play with it. But still, I mean, $18,000... It's quite a big sales day. So if I look at the last seven days, $55,000 in sales uh, on Amazon. And that's just for this account. Um, 15 days, $84,000 in 15 days. And then 30 days, 147000 My usual sales would be around $3,000 a day. Um, which comes to around around 100k a month. Um, but now the sales are a bit higher because it is Christmas time. January usually for paper product is also a very high month. February it goes down a bit. That's when people don't buy as much. But yeah, um, that is the account. Let's go back. Um, 18k is like a dreamland money that is pretty much dreamland uh for for me too today i was doing a lot of reflecting as well um thinking that 2018 and this is like a very raw and vulnerable thing for me to share but 2018 when i would go to the supermarket i often didn't know if my card would work like if i had enough money or if it would be like rejected. Um, so then I would have to ask the cashier to take a few things, you know, away and then try again with a, like a small amount if it worked. Like <clears throat> I used to really have a very difficult time around money. Um, and this was a dream um, in order to, you know, have the financial freedom to build this out. And um so it is pretty wild and how things can change in a matter of a few years. And um, it, and the cool thing is for me to realize is it didn't happen by chance, right? Like it's a matter of following a system and doing it again and again. Um, so, yeah.
And that's what I want to share with you here today as well. So <clears throat> today we're going to be talking about manufacturing. We talked about um, creating the product yesterday, and we talked about different types of products. We talked about private label with the like versus an original product. And I introduced to you my version of what I believe is the nicest way to launch a product. And that is the hybrid version. So a hybrid version, for those of you who were there yesterday, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's basically creating something that isn't original, but doesn't come with the risk of creating an original product, which usually comes with like really, 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 really high cost. <clears throat> And a hybrid doesn't. Hybrid products are, as you can see, a lot of dinner planner types of products, um, cards, and you can like really invent things. Like yesterday I showed you the vision board um, thing. This, by the way, is not my product. I This is a product that I researched because I wanted to create my own vision board. And then I kind of procrastinated on it. <laughs> It's still on, on one of my to-do lists <laughs> for at some point. <laughs> But um, um, I thought it was really cool. So um, it's a uh, vision board. I think I would want it to be differently. But I think it shows that you can have original products at a reasonable cost. Because these type of products are all printable. And things that are printable, and we can print on paper, we can print on wood, we can print on acrylics, on plastics. So anytime where you are printing something original, that's what I call a hybrid. Um, it's I've never heard anyone else talk about it, so other people might talk about it differently. But for me, this is, in my mind, the hybrid <laughs> and the way to go. Because... Doing a hybrid model, in many cases, gives you a special bonus that you cannot do otherwise, and that is to test your idea and fund your idea through print-on-demand. Yesterday, I shared about how I fund, I did fund one of my ideas, and that is the habit tracker, uh, not habit tracker, sorry, the ADHD planner. So this is one of my journal ideas that I did start with print-on-demand. I specifically started with KDP, which is an Amazon print-on-demand version. Makes it easier. I didn't want to deal with any like third party. Make it so much harder for me to figure it out. I wanted to see if it works on Amazon. <clears throat> I didn't want to do any drop shipping. Amazon doesn't like drop shipping. Drop shipping can be quite risky. And also, drop shipping, so many people don't talk about it on YouTube, and it frustrates me so much. Everyone says that drop shipping, you just, you know, put it out there, and then, um, you know, you get the sales, and then you don't have to put any money in. It doesn't, it's not true. For drop shipping, if you want to do drop shipping on Amazon, Amazon only pays you weeks and weeks and weeks later. That's one unfortunate thing. It takes three, four weeks until you get paid. So if you get like a thousand drop shipping orders, you need to pay in advance. So you need to use a credit card or something. So for those that keep sharing about drop shipping on YouTube, I feel like sometimes not the whole story is shared. So I prefer to have no risk. <laughs> I'm pretty, um, you know, when it comes to this type of business, I'm a bit risk adverse. <clears throat> So I've done everything with KDP. There is, I don't have any risk there. Um, it's all through the Amazon platform. I don't have to pay any fees. Um, Amazon only um, kind of charges me by automatically taking away the printing cost. And it's anyway money I would have never seen, and they just pay me in royalties. So that's why I found that that was the best method And it made the whole process of growing extremely fast. Yesterday, I talked about the compounding effect as well and how I compounded, <clears throat> my business compounded. Let me see if I can, I'll have to draw it again. I cannot find I, um, where I have put it on paper. So if we look at time, 
spent revenue or money, I mean, I went sort of like this and started small. For this brand, <clears throat> so this is roughly two years for this particular brand. And the reason I was able to go like that is one, I'm funding a lot through print on demand. Like my KDP really helps me with a lot of these things. And I look at return on investment. With paper products, you have a really great return on investment. Like um, this vision board kit, there's a very high perceived value when you get this type of product. It looks really beautiful. The packaging is done well. It comes with, with a little um, planner. It comes with these vision board cards. And in production, this might cost up to $3 max. But this type of product sells for $30 plus because it's a perceived value. Again, people are not buying paper. They're not just buying the material. They're buying what they're getting out of it. In this case, what are people buying? They're buying a vision board kit. They're buying the dream future because they are creating a vision board, right? So <clears throat> this is worth something to us. Like, I'm happy when I buy these things. Like, even though I know how much people pro probably spend on production, I'm more than happy to spend $30 on a product that I find beautiful, where I feel like the person that who, who has created that, that has put the work in, um, that's valuable to me, you know? It's valuable to me that someone has searched for all the different, um, you know, images and possible, like... That's what we, in the end of the day, are buying. Now, because if we sell this type of product, we are the creator in that case, the return on investment helps us to reinvest into new products, right? So at different types, you can invest into new products. And that is how it can happen that this particular brand that you're seeing right now in my Seller Central account, last year uh, during Christmas, made roughly a thousand-ish dollars a day, which is not bad. I mean, 30K was pretty nice as well. But this month, this year was just so outrageously different <laughs> and so much bigger because I was able in between to reinvest, get more products, reinvest, and so on. Um, and that's how I was able to... Uh, to have this crazy compounding effect. Um, and I find it fascinating um, how things can happen that quickly um, and it's replicable, replicatable, replicable. <laughs> you, you understand what I mean, right? You can replicate it. Um, so, <clears throat> and together with the other Amazon brand that I have, which grows a little bit more conservatively than this one. Uh, it's also not been the main focus of mine, but altogether it's a 200K month, um, which still blows my mind <laughs> um, how things work. It's not only me. I've got quite a few clients that have launched this product here, freshly launched yesterday. I think it was 42 or 47 sales in one day. Awesome, right? Just launched. It's just awesome. <laughs> That's what I love about Amazon. They have millions of customers. If you create something that is unique and brings value other than what's already available, that's how you get the sales. And now let's get started with today's topic. Because before we get to even think of manufacturing, we want to be thinking of something else. We need to create a unique selling point. A unique selling point is by addressing a desire or a problem. Sometimes you can address both. Now let's take an example. Let's take Kodito set. Um, 
she has an affirmation card set. Most affirmation card sets have a bit of a vibe of like love and life, lo love and light, very airy, very only positive, right? And for some people, that's not going to like land. Like it, it can feel fake. It can feel like, oh, you know, like toxic positivity. So there's going to be a group out there and we want to always look at the unique selling point for a specific group. We cannot make it unique and attractive to everyone. If we try to do that, in most cases, we make it attractive to no one. We, it is good to have something that is polarizing in some senses. Like an ADHD planner is polarizing. Some people like the topic of ADHD. Some people are really annoyed by it. And it is polarizing, but that works. I'm not trying to have a planner for everyone. I'm just trying to have a planner for people that are neurodivergent, that have ADHD or maybe autism, right? Now, if we look at this, this looks pretty, but um, when we look at the text, we see a lot of like swear words as well, right? And if we think of unique selling point is that the problem the person might have, they don't resonate with like the overly positive, like airy fairy type of affirmation cards. They want something more like, hey, in your face that they can relate to, that they can believe in. And they might feel like a lot more motivated and feeling like it's resonating if there's a swear word, you know, within it. And that's where we hit a desire. And the unique selling point here is that it's matching exactly that. It's very, it is in your face while it is friendly. The brand is called Got Your Back because the, the idea behind it is still to have it be sort of like your bigger sister giving you, you know, <laughs> some advice or your bigger si sister like hyping you up or your best friend. So it is still wholesome and there's like still positive messages as well but they are mixed in with like a little bit more in your face and straightforward messages um, and that is a unique selling point that is attractive to to people and that's why this set even though it's been around for just very few weeks on Amazon has sold really 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 well um, because it's different it's unique in a way and people find it very attractive <clears throat> Uh, let's see I understand this because of my copywriting service don't expect to make everyone happy but focus on making your niche happy and you're more successful I 100% agree 100% agree this is not for everyone but the people this is for they're going to love it and what I love about it is in the reviews too like, it only has five-star reviews. People are just raving about it. And I was a bit nervous um, when when we released it for the reviews. I'm like, oh, hopefully people are going to get it and the right people that this is meant for are getting it and are reviewing it. And it's just, it worked out really well. So proud and so happy about it. Um, <clears throat> but the unique selling point next to figuring out if there's a market it's going to be something that's going to either make or break your product. I would never suggest you go for a product that is basically similar to other products that are already out there. You want to always add something that is unique. You want to add value. Um, I find the mindset that helps me a lot here is to think of, I want to have this be a total win-win-win situation. And the reason I'm saying three times win is I want my customer who's buying it to have a win situation. They're happy with the product. I want the manufacturer to have a win situation and I want myself to have a win. Everyone can be happy and it works out well. And that's not going to happen if I'm not adding value to the market. A lot of times I see people rushing launches and then they just want to get on the market very quickly. They want to make money very quickly, but then they miss out on really reflecting on having a unique selling point. Without a unique selling point, 
it's just going to a product becomes invisible unless you have a ton of reviews and that's not usually what we have when we launch when we launch we usually have no reviews so we want to um, combat that by having a very unique selling point Once we're clear on a unique selling point and the best way to get clear on the unique selling point is really to think of like, who is your ideal target market? Like, who are you working towards? And the reason why I like to use myself often as my own ideal target market, because I understand myself somewhat <laughs> and I know what my problems are and I know what my desires are and I can then create things that I personally love and that I will personally find helpful for my problem or to reach my desires. That is the reason why I created an ADHD planner. I needed one <laughs> and I needed to, it to be in a specific way. Other planners just didn't work for me. I needed that space. I needed to plan out my week. I needed to have a place where I write down my recurring things that happen, you know, I otherwise don't think about it, right? Like <laughs> I need to have it written down somewhere. I, I need that mental support. And I didn't really find a lot of the calendars and things had that out there. So in order to create a unique selling point for my problem, I was able to identify it through looking at my own problems and looking at my own desires. So if you're working on your product, I highly recommend your first product to be something that either you're very familiar with because you might be, um, it has to do with your family or family member or your work or anything like that, or you are your own ideal customer because that's when you can truly create a unique selling point that is really beneficial. Sometimes I have done that in the past as well, especially when I um, sold products I'm not passionate about. I thought of like a unique selling point and my unique selling point was like, make a bigger pack, add more stuff in it, <laughs> have a different color. I don't know, like my unique selling points were not really that unique and we're not really addressing a problem or a specific desire. And that's why this seems so simple. I know, but in the simplicity, that's where the magic is at. Often we're looking for complicated and like it has to be a complicated formula of this and this and that and we overlook the real simple things but it's often the real simple things that actually make the difference um, me looking at the unique selling point and focusing on the problems and desires that I wanted to you know serve is what makes the product now sell as much as it is selling because my own problems and my own desires are not unique to myself. They also match a lot of other people. And those people are buying it. And those people are then either liking the product. Sometimes they will return it. But in most cases, they will keep it and they will like it. Um, okay. So we have a unique selling point. We want to be thinking of like, how do we actually make an idea that we have in our mind become an actual, an actual product? Like, how can we make the idea become this? Um, what do we need? Well, we do need a few different steps. One step being that we need to design it. <clears throat> I'm just taking the colors. So, if our end goal, let's look, like let's reverse engineer it. I always like to reverse engineer, it has always helped me. Our end goal is to have a finished product. Finished product. In order for us to having a finished product, we will need a factory that will have produced it. So we need factory in order to, for the factory to be able to produce our product. Let's make the shorter so it fits into the frame. We need to give them instructions, like what are they needing to do? 
And this is super simplified, but in, in essence, that's what it is. What are instructions? A design file. Let's say this is the product, right? So we need to give them the design file. We need to decide ahead of time sizes. Um, we need to decide what type of box we want to do. And if we don't know what is available, factory is more than happy ahead of time to tell us, hey, these are our possibilities. You can also always look around in a shop and see, ha, huh, I saw this. I like it. I will make a photo of it. Like sometimes as simple as that, I will do it the same way. I'll take a photo. I send a photo to my manufacturer. Hey, can you do something like this? They will say, hmm, let me check. Yes. Or they will say, no, that's not something that we do. Um, sometimes the answers are just like really very easy to get. It's just us having to ask. <clears throat> now, if they send us a catalog and show us like, oh, okay, these are the different possibilities. These are the packaging types. Um, this is a different type of paper, for example. <clears throat> and we have decided on um, what it is that we want to do. And we need to create a design file. If we want to further reverse engineer, obviously we will need the design to be um, created. So we, we either, we are good designers and we design ourselves or we work with a designer. Um, I know a lot of people that try to do this all on their own on Canva. If you're not a professional designer and you're working on a physical product, have it, invest the money in a professional designer. It makes all the difference in the end of the day. The $200 or $1,000 maybe that you save on the front end, you will pay on the back end. Let's not take decisions that are only short term, um, like with a short term um, saving in mind, because that's often what's going to bite us in in the eye. <laughs> in Germany, we say, I'm not sure if that's a, an English way of saying like, Something will bite you in the ass. Do you say that? I think so. <laughs> well, it it will bite you <laughs> in the ass <laughs> later on if you you know if you look just for the short term. Um, I have everything designed by a um, professional designer, and something like this you can have it professionally designed for five hundred dollars, sometimes even less, um, but. Doing it on your own is not always going to serve you unless you're really good at designing. Um, it really does make a difference. Look at this. This just looks professional. And this is hand-drawn. The designer is a, um, is a designer I've worked with a few different times. She, she's in Brazil. Um, she she just hand-draw these. And then look. it just looks super professional. And it's rightly centered it all looks great and sometimes if you have like a, an amazing eye and you're really good on canva you could possibly do it but in most cases it's just not something i would recommend the only difference is if you do you know print on demand ahead of time i've I've done KDP there as well and self-designed. And there, I think there's no problem at all to do KDP. I think with a print-on-demand print journal, that high-end quality is not even uh, like expected from the end user. But when it comes to like a proper finished product, that's when people, they notice the difference. They cannot always tell why. Um, I can also not always tell why, but we can make out like what is professionally designed and whatnot. Like, have you ever gone to a restaurant and you see, you walk through it and you can immediately see if the owner has designed it or if a professional designer has designed it? Like these restaurants that have been designed by the owner, sometimes they have like these red walls here and then they have like a random painting there and then... <laughs> It always looks like a little bit 
I mean, it's still cozy, but it looks, it doesn't have the same effect, of course, as something that has been done by a interior designer. The same effect with graphic design for your products. So I, I highly recommend that. Um, and if you do a you know, a plan or anything in that direction, through having used KDP, you can kind of confirm if the layout that you have in mind is something that people are liking. And you can then fund a designer. But I don't recommend creating your very own finished product without a designer like this was also created by a designer. Like, I would have not been able to do this. Um, you know, it all fits. Like, it's, there's, like, it's the small differences that you otherwise make, you know, a difference to our eyes. We will notice it. Okay, I don't want to get um, too much into this rabbit hole of the design, but that's what we want to do. Of course, we have our unique selling point. We would have brainstormed our idea. We would have worked with a designer. Maybe you, you do some print on demand to confirm the idea, to fund the idea. It is not the only way to fund the idea. I saw a comment yesterday how I have been funding it. I've also been funding it through other things. The first time I sold on Amazon, I actually did not even know about KDP. <clears throat> And I just, you know, sold things. Um, and uh, I was able to then sell the product through that. Like, I just figured out ways to be resourceful because I wanted it so much. Like, sometimes when you want something so much and you really want to do it, you'll figure it out. There, there's always a solution. And more than once, it's been me selling products i was doing um um work on fiverr as a freelancer um to fund a different type of project i have done consulting work in order to fund um, my projects like i've always figured out a way to do it then of course with print on demand and kdp it has made it a lot easier to stay within the same category to have one idea not only fund the other idea but also confirm the other idea. So that made it like a double awesome <laughs> um, thing. But um, I believe that if a project is meant to happen and you really want to do it, the way to fund it will, you will find a way to fund it. Um, it might not be obvious right now, but it's often not obvious because we go with the mindset of like, oh, there's no way. And I've done that for so many years. Like I focus so much on the problem. Like, yeah, no, that's impossible. I can't afford it. Without like really giving myself even 30 minutes to say like, okay, let's take a pen and paper out. Let's do some brainstorming. Did I actually even think of solutions or did I immediately come to the conclusion? Um, no, I, I can't do it because that's the realm of my awareness. And this has actually been one of my bigger aha moments in life like to realize this is me and my awareness when i'm here like i'm in my own bubble and solutions might just be outside of my awareness and just because i'm not aware of a solution right now doesn't mean that there's no solution out there and through realizing that and saying like okay let me at least brainstorm different ideas that's when Either you can find an idea, you can also research ideas. And that's when I realized, oh, maybe the solution to how to fund it, it's not that it doesn't exist. It's not that um, I'm, I cannot afford it. It's just that I don't know yet how to afford it. And my job is to figure out how to. Um, and it's just a small thinking difference but that small thinking difference actually opened so many doors for me because I then started to think like huh where is the solution like I know that there's a solution out there I just am not aware of it just yet so that's my mindset always now like I you know problems will always appear and sometimes as you grow the your problems grow too um and the only way to 
get over the problems as far as my awareness is up to this point is to know like, hey, my problem solution is just somewhere out there. My job is to find it. And then I don't focus on a problem anymore. I found, I focus on solutions. And when I focus on finding the solution, that's usually when I get to find the solution. So if you don't know yet how to fund your idea, it just means that it's out of your awareness right now. But it doesn't mean that there's no solution. It's just, um, it's your job to change the focus from I don't have a way of doing it to, huh, let me figure out a way to do it. There must be a solution. There are other people out there that have done it too. I just don't know yet how I can do it, but I will figure it out. Um, and that's probably the main reason why I was able to fund different projects because I found different ways to do it. Um, and the best definitely was KDP because it's just so aligned. <laughs> um, and I'm so happy that I found that KDP solution. And since then, a lot of other people were able to also use the KDP solution in order to either, either fund something or just as an income stream on its own. Okay, so let's get back before I get too backtracked. Um, so if we reverse engineer this all, right, we wanted to... The finished product is the goal. We wanted the factory. We needed the instructions and we needed the design file in order to give the factory the instructions. Let's talk about how do we actually find this factory in order to be able to give them instructions in the first place. <laughs> and the way that we can find these factories <clears throat> these days, um, thank goodness, is set very, very easy. <clears throat> so we can find a factory by using a few different ways. One way is, of course, Googling. I, I never want to underestimate the power of Google. <laughs> Google can often answer so many of the questions that we have. Um, only like some of the problems, only if I had just Googled them, I would have had the solution right away. But I don't always think of the Googling. <laughs> but the same happens with factories. Of course, we can Google. That's the simplest, but not always the easiest because we will get so many results. And how do we know if that's a good manufacturer? How do we not know? Um, I prefer um, two routes. One route being a website called Ali Baba. Um, I'm sure some of you have heard of it before. Let me know if you've already heard of Alibaba and if you've used it in the past. I would be very curious to see um, who he has already used Alibaba. And a third, uh, so, hmm, I don't know, sourcing agent is another way of doing it. Yes, I've heard of it, but I've not used it. Yes, I've heard of it, but I've not used it. Yes, Alibaba, I've heard of it, but not used it. Yes, I have used Alibaba. Okay, so many of you have, um, you know, Alibaba. Some of you have used it. Most of you have not used it. So let's talk about it a little bit. Uh, I see some of you have used AliExpress in smaller quantities. Okay, that's very nice. You know, through AliExpress, you can also buy directly from manufacturers. That's often used for um, drop shipping as well. Um, <clears throat> so these are my two preferred ways of finding a manufacturer um, when I look for a product and I don't have a manufacturer yet. By now, especially since I focus a lot on paper products, most of the manufacturers that I work with are um there are three main manufacturers and they're all manufacturers that i've been working with in the past two sometimes three um uh, three years almost four years um so um your own network at some point is also going to be the solution especially if you have products that are 
in a way similar, not by the content, the content does not have to be similar, but in ways of it being manufactured. For example, if you ma manufacture cards and you want to also manufacture journals and you want to be manufacturing, just as an example, a vision board kit, this all can be done by the very same manufacturer because it all has something in common. That is that it requires a printing, a printing company. Um, and printing companies usually tend to be able to do multiple different types of printing unless they specialize on something. But in most cases, they are available. Um, and then it makes it a lot easier because then you have one manufacturer, maybe you have two that you use for a lot of different products and different um, um, yeah, products that you have, even though they're different type of products. I want to also let you know this product here is manufactured by one of the manufacturers that I work with. And it includes something that is not um, from the factory, right? Your manufacturer can help you source as well. So if you say, hey, you show them a photo, you saw something on Etsy, and you're like, oh, this is lovely, I love it. Um, and let's say it is a paper product combined with a different type of product. Let's say this product, right? So what did I do? I went to my manufacturer and said, I would love to have like a wood block with my brand name on it and then a card I would like to have a slit that is just slightly tilted to the back so that um, it shows nicely and it allows for comfortable writing <clears throat> and they said no problem we'll take care of the printing and we'll find a partner manufacturer we will buy those pieces for you and put it all together for you so the beautiful thing is here, I don't even have to deal with multiple manufacturers. I deal with one manufacturer and then they take care of it all. <clears throat> so the manufacturers in Alibaba are much cheaper than using a local printer. Yes. Um, and it's not about just being cheaper. It's about the possibilities that you have. And also to be... Uh, Something I don't like about current times is that you could be working with a local manufacturer and they still get it done in China and then they just, you know, have a chip to them and then they sell it to you. <laughs> a lot of my manufacturers, they work for American printing companies, which would be pretty shocking because then they would pretend it's made in the US, but it actually wasn't. Um, but yes, I have all my products um, done in in China, there are a few different benefits. We have a variety that is almost impossible anywhere else because especially in the last 10 years, China has gone, when it comes to the manufacturing, they have professionalized to a point that you cannot imagine. I visited some of my manufacturers now in November and October. And one of the manufacturers, they are by now the biggest in China. And with that, I believe the biggest in the world. Um, the factory, it took us two hours just to walk through it. Imagine two hours just to walk through it. Um, the capacity is 600,000 pieces per day. <laughs> per day. You have to imagine that. And at the same time, they have a variety of products. They have a team of 30 people just developing eco-friendly materials. So you can get what I thought was really cool. So you can get um, covers made out of um, apple peel. And apple peel is then made into a powder and then it's made into a yarn. And then it looks like linen, but actually is recycled apple peel that is used um, and, and they get it from a different factory that creates like apple sauce types of things and then it really is eco-friendly um, 
And they also have worked on similar things with like banana leaves, with pineapple. They have a team alone, like of 30 people just for eco-friendly. It's all certified. It's all like the level of professionalism. It's unimaginable. And I know that in the US, I wouldn't be able to get that. And if I did, it would be at a price that would make it impossible to really profit. The only one that would really benefit would be the printer. And I really want to have a win-win situation. And um, in in China, um, with my manufacturers, I definitely have that. And not only are the factories great, also the working conditions are really great in the factories. The people are amazing. Um, like we had the best time when I was over there. So yeah, for me, like it is decided that I most likely am, unless there's like anything coming up, I will be sourcing from China with the manufacturers that I've worked with and the quality is just really really good too and the prices are fair so <clears throat> it's an absolute win-win uh Laura how did you find them initially through a lot of trial and error like I went through a lot of different factories that were not as good um so it took me testing different people and then figuring out which is uh, who's going to be the right um, and Julie since you're in journalist and planners pro um, it's one of my programs I share the contacts to those and usually um, in my industry if you have like a special manufacturer you don't share <laughs> you keep that as your own like trade secret but I feel like you know what um, I rather you have a good manufacturer that you can rely on. These are vetted, like you won't have any issues with them and they can do really uh, amazing work. So um, uh, I share those contacts here. But let's get back um, about um, Alibaba. So I do have a sheet where you can see like how the Alibaba thing works. And I think you can Google around a little bit as well and look at this. I, I think walking through Alibaba is not going to really benefit you here. Um, but I want to talk about it very quickly, what you want to be looking out for. Because in Alibaba, you have a few benefits that you would have nowhere else. And that is that they have an escrow service. So if you find a manufacturer through Alibaba, no matter if it's one that I introduced to you through one of my programs, because that's where I introduce my own manufacturers and create, um, facilitate. Um, and it's not affiliated in any way. I don't have any gain through it other than, um, than having happy clients <laughs> that um, have good manufacturers and a happy manufacturer too. Um, uh, I facilitate um, coaching calls as well, Q&A calls. You can jump on the Zoom with them, ask your questions and um, get the support that you need. Um, but what is great, it's called Trade Assurance. And Trade Assurance is, I think they have revolutionized the e-commerce space with that and the sourcing space because you can basically, for the first time ever, buy overseas um, and you can connect with even uh, in other countries um, and when you buy your product you are assured by Alibaba that whatever you invested you're not going to be losing it so it has such a massive benefit um, because you it's very safe um, let's say you're not happy with the results, there's like a lot of issues, the inspection company failed or something like that, and you can always get your money back. Another way that I like, and I like to do like a combination of both, I always try to have um, the first time I interact with a new manufacturer through Alibaba because of trade assurance. Um, if I've been working with them many times and I directly wire to their account, but before I try to do it through Alibaba, a second way of doing it is going through a sourcing agent. So a sourcing agent basically is a person that can help you 
um, find out the right manufacturer. Um, and the benefit here is not only will they find the right manufacturer, they will also be able to negotiate for you. Being a local, they'll most likely get the better rates than that you could get. So the sourcing agent kind of pays for itself <laughs> already. Um, and pricing is also pretty fair. Um, it's roughly between $20 and $25, sometimes up to $40. And they take between 5 to 10 hours, depending on how complex your product is. And especially as a first-timer, I would recommend going that route instead of trying to do it all on your own. Because a sourcing agent can set it all up for you. They can even visit the manufacturer. They can review the samples for you. They can collect samples from different manufacturers and send it all to you. Like there's so many things that a sourcing agent can do that will greatly help you during the, the first um, time that you're doing it. And for the price, it's just, I find, especially considering that in 100% of the cases, they will get you a better rate than you will get. Um, so, yeah. How do you find a sourcing agent? You can find it on Upwork. Um, they're sourcing agents' websites. In part of my programs, I also introduce you to my own sourcing agents so you can use the ones that I've been using for or that I've been working with for years. <clears throat> Let's see. I have... I see another question. How about COVID times and the challenges for shipping? Whew, that was tough. <laughs> yeah, during COVID, it was really tough. There was a lot of challenges for shipping, but they were everywhere because of the globalization and the whole world being dependent on other countries for materials. Like um, paper products had already everywhere in the world were a little bit more challenging than other times. It was a lot more expensive as well than it is now. It is cheaper now. <clears throat> but yeah, thank goodness. I, I, I guess COVID is over and hopefully the next pandemic is only going to be like 100 years from now. Uh, touch wood. But um, yeah, that was a bit challenging. <clears throat> to just wait for the whole order to arrive and hope it's okay. Um, I get a sample. A sample is something that is required. Um, I will never order without getting a sample. And ideally, you shop around for more than one factory unless you know it is like a vetted factory and you know people that have worked with them. But if it's a new factory, depending on what type of product you want to do, you want to get a sample of what they have. Oh, obviously sample um, very important you want to test it you want to look at it um, with the hybrid type of model that we do you can have a custom sample of your product cost around a hundred dollars to maybe two hundred dollars but it's worth it you want to have the sample you can also use it for photography and also once you hold it in your hand that's when you sometimes notice things that didn't seem off um, digitally but then uh, when you see them in person you're like huh maybe the font is truly too big like this doesn't feel right or that's when you really notice things that you want to change and that's when you can put yourself in your customer shoes and imagine okay if I bought this product and I started like you know going through it what are things that I'm noticing do I like it what is my customer what's my own experience like note everything down make changes um highly recommend um if you are too much of in a hurry for a launch slow yourself down get a sample first it is worth spending a few extra weeks having a proper sample making the right changes before getting into having the whole product them on Amazon and then noticing like, oh shoot, there's something off. I should have changed it. What is uh, what is usual? The financial agreement with the manufacturer at the beginning through Alibaba, there's automatically an agreement. So you will have a contract with them. The Do you mean with the negotiation? So usually ahead of 
starting to pay like a down payment and usually you don't pay the whole amount so if you get a thousand products for example created you do a 30 percent deposit in most cases um if your product is only costs around a thousand dollars then it's maybe a 50 percent deposit for them um you get that after you agree with the sample you can often get the sample cost back once you decide to work with them they will then um, adjust your deposit or they will adjust your final balance um, deducting the sample fee that they have charged you um, and once you uh, once you've agreed to the sample that's when you make your final negotiation you don't pay a deposit and then change the financials you always want to have that ahead of time you want to say um negotiate a price with them that matches your own goals and then that they agree to do negotiation is a must you always want to bargain you always want to reduce the price it's just common practice actually all over the world but specifically in Asia um, very common practice so if you did just accept the price that they gave you it kind of gives away that you have not been doing this before um, and then they can just take you for a ride <laughs> and you don't want that they want you want them to also respect you as a business owner and that's why negotiation is so important and I think a good rule of thumb is like 15 20 percent um, it is helpful to do it with a sourcing agent the first time um, because then you got like the best possible deal already with the manufacturer and then you can continue communicating directly with the manufacturer after the first order and then the next orders are going to be easier. Um, but definitely it needs to be negotiated. <clears throat> do you get all your cards printed in China? I get everything done in China. Yeah, all of my products. Um, let me think. Uh, am I saying the truth? Yeah, all of my products are in China. I've worked with clients, however, that have not. I've worked with clients that have gotten their products done in Europe. I've got uh, clients that have done their products in the US, um, in India, in Vietnam, in Indonesia. Like, there's so many different places where you could. Um, I have my trusted manufacturers that I work with. Um, the products that I have and they're all in China not all in the same places with different regions but they're all in China yeah and um, yeah I'm very very happy with that as well <clears throat> do we have any questions about this at the moment what about import tax how do you determine it and incorporate it into your pricing I'm not quite sure what you exactly mean. I I guess you mean the bonds that you pay when you... Um, I do something which is called door-to-door -door shipping. So I work with a shipping company and the shipping company will give me a, a rate and they will take care of the bond and the deposit. Um, usually because I have products that are not on a higher price it it's pretty it's um relatively affordable so let me give you an example so this product at the moment as i'm ordering more of these i'm paying roughly two dollars a piece for my shipping i pay roughly 50 cents per piece 50 50 to 60 maybe that includes any import duties bonds and everything like that so what i i conservatively with if you have if you order your first a thousand pieces i would calculate with between 80 cents to a dollar per piece including shipping until reaching the amazon warehouse so that gives you a good conservative calculation of how much to calculate and then the shipping company will do it on your behalf and will take care of all of those things and even though by by now i could do it all on my own i prefer the shipping company they are my 
shipping partners. They take care of it and I do door-to-door -door shipping. Um, so everything is included in what I pay the shipping company and they take care of it. Um, so I, for myself, to calculate my own margins, to calculate um, what my product costs, I will then calculate what I pay the manufacturer per piece. In this case, roughly $2. Maybe it's $2.05. I, I don't know exactly. Um, around $2.00. And then I calculate roughly the, let's say, 60 cents. So my total is $2.60. And that's landed cost, including everything, including any type of fee. Um, and then the landed cost is what I calculate with to determine my... Um, um, return on investment. And let's let's take an actual um, example with my product. Let's calculate it on Amazon, and I'm going to show you what the return on investment is. <clears throat> Ad, I'll share my screen in a moment. I'm just going to look for my product. <clears throat> there it is. Um, and I need to share my screen. Okay, so here you see this is the exact product that I was showing you. Mm, I will calculate my profitability, my return on investment. Um, okay, so it's $27.99 that I'm charging. It's roughly $2.60 that I'm paying because I'm doing so much uh, bulk orders. Um, even if we say $3, just to be super conservative with like additional fees, I then usually spend around another 20% in uh, um, advertising and things like that. And then I have a net profit um, from January to September of roughly $9.44 or $9.39 during the you know Christmas season because that's when it, it's a little bit higher. Uh, my margin is roughly 40 uh, yeah, almost 42%, 41.95, and my return on investment is 276%. <clears throat> um, yeah, the person is buying what is in there. It gives me a lot of room. I sometimes change the price. I've also offered it for less. It gives me an opportunity to move things around quite, quite a bit. And... Um, to show you that this estimation is not always right, like it says I sold 200. Here you can see I sold 200, 2,256, but even that is underestimated. Um, but yeah, um, that's the return um, on investment. <clears throat> um, and that's including all of that. Of course, there's no tax or anything included that I have to pay afterwards, but that that's when we're talking about income tax. And here I don't I cannot give you any advice on income tax because that's going to be purely up to your situation, where you are situ you know, where you are situated, in which state, which country, expenses, all of that stuff. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> Okay, they ship to you and then you ship to Amazon? No, because I live in Germany, I actually don't ship to myself. I have the manufacturer ship directly to a warehouse um, and sometimes directly to Amazon. Because I ship containers, um, I don't have that ship directly to Amazon. But it, when you get started, you will send directly to Amazon. That makes the most sense and as you grow then you can also do the warehouse 
a thing that I have done if you live in the US. I have many clients that live in the US and what they do, they just put their products in their garage. It's just a lot cheaper that way. And if I lived in the US, that's I don't know if it would fit into a garage, but I would probably have a lot of product in the garage because <laughs> then I have a lot of flexibility and I would like that. But since I live in Germany, um, yeah, I only have the sample sent to me and then I will order on Amazon and then um, see how it you know, gets like, I want to see how, how it comes out and I want to see the user experience, how Amazon treats the product as well, how it's packaged and I have a look at it. Um, but yeah, um, that's, that's the beauty. Like, um, next on Friday, I'm traveling within Germany, but it does. I like, I'm completely location independent. The main reason why I live in Germany is because of my kids and that, they go to school and daycare and that's why otherwise I would be just like a digital nomad like I know that through Amazon I could live I could live in Bali I could live in Spain I could live anywhere in the world because I don't need to ship out anything um, Amazon does it all for me yeah um, so much helpful info my brain is in overdrive 2024 20, is going to be the uh be the the year yes <laughs> there was one in china i was using and it ended up taking way longer than estimated and they were kind of oh well uh ab about from reviews they hit or miss with delivery times and bulk orders from what i hear shipping companies um it depends again here it's like finding the right fit it took me a lot of trial and error i've also had Negative experiences with shipping companies where my product was delayed by six weeks or even longer. But also there was like a lot of things that were out of their control. So there's like also circumstantial things that happened like um, COVID and the ports being full, busy season. So there's a lot of things that cannot always be in control. But I have now found a shipping company that I exclusively work with them on all my shipments and almost all of my clients work with them as well unless the manufacturer has a better deal and sometimes it's worth asking your manufacturer because they tend to have good shipping partners themselves in most cases and sometimes their ship is just closer to being you know fully packed so it's faster and sometimes it's a better deal it's worth you know comparing but you can always ask you manufacture um, if they have a shipping company that they could you know um, introduce you or if they could calculate or give you a quote the, the manufacturer can help out with a lot of these things um, does amazon allow ordering author copies of the books journals and shipping them to germany or how do you get to see the samples uh, the samples i order from the factory not from amazon so the sample, I get that done way before I even ship anything to Amazon. If you're talking about print on demand, so for print on demand, I'm a little bit more like, huh, it's okay. I, I'm not as organized with um, KDP because there's very little that could go wrong. And I just, um, yeah, order author copies. Very simple. But when I order my own products from Amazon, I need to use a different account because you're not allowed to use buy your own products with the same account. So I just use my personal Amazon account and I'll just buy my own product. And I also buy all of my clients' products. That's why I have this. I uh, bought this on Amazon um, and I have a few other um, products here as well from my clients I tend to buy my own clients products because I want to see the whole the whole experience as well and how the product come out and how the experience as a customer is and in this case I am the customer I know it's a lot of information today and you know in three days there's only so much that I can share and I wish I could share everything <laughs> And I want to share everything, <laughs> but it's not always that easy to do um, because it is a lot of things. And I don't want to overwhelm you either because that's not going to serve you um, on, on your journey at all, right? Like being overwhelmed. 
Um, so if you are fine, I would like to introduce you to a way where you could have 12 months to get this done. You don't need to know everything in just three days, which anyway would be impossible. We would be talking the whole day <laughs> in order to do that. I wanted to open <clears throat> um, the mind and um, give you ideas and give you a good bird's eye view so that you can picture and visualize what the steps would be like without holding you back. Like uh, I didn't want to do like one of these um, events. I'm sure you all have been to these events where it's just like you kind of didn't really gain anything. Like they only talked about nothing really. And that's why for me it was very important to really give you actionable, real advice and things that I would share with my customers as well. But I want to show you as well how, if you do want to really do this, um, how you can take the next year, 2024, and make this a possibility. Because I have something which is called the Product Loan School, which I'm very, very excited about. For last two years, I've been mostly only doing one-on-one -on -one coaching, um, done for you services, done with you. I had a very small um, group coaching group, but I have not been doing this. And so many people were asking me, hey, Laura, can you actually do something about Amazon? We know that you, you do one-on-one, -on -one, but can you actually do like some sort of group program? And I've been working on this for the past few months. <clears throat> And this is what I can offer you. The Product Loan School is a 12-month group coaching program. You get a full course step-by-step. Step. And I can show you what's inside the course as well because you actually get everything that we've talked about in a more bite side, and then you can just look at what it is that you need. So I'm going to show you like an internal document that is between me and my team where we have planned out all the different steps that are included in the product loan school. So we really talk about everything in bite size from product research, validating if your product is a good idea, product development, brand development, how to set up your business, how to set up the Amazon account, how to find a manufacturer, how to negotiate, like all the different things. Plus, you get the contacts to my own sourcing agents. You get, um, as a bonus, you get the contracts that you can use, like template, contract templates that are going to protect you, your ideas. We're talking about trademarks, how to protect your brand as well. And basically from start to finish of finding an idea to actually launching it and it not just being a course because I thought about that too but I find a course alone is not enough in most cases you need the possibility to really ask the questions get feedback get coach when you get stuck get help to get unstuck um, have the community, co-working, all of these things. So it includes, the, it, it includes the full course, but it also includes a community with weekly co-working sessions with other members so you can have your accountability. So it's not just another course, but actually something with accountability so you can end implementation so you can get it done. Coaching calls with me, coaching calls with one of my own trusted um, team members, Ivan, who does my ads. So he'll be able to support you with your ads when it's time to do the ads. You'll get my personal contacts, introduction to manufacturers, contract templates and listing templates. And <clears throat> all of that, I've been thinking about the pricing and how to Best do it and group coaching has always been um, $5,000 with me in the past year. <clears throat> 
as my experience has also grown and the results have grown. But I am aware that that's, it, that's not the most accessible type of price. And I'm not here after the money because as you have seen, I, I make the money every, like in uh, everywhere else. I mean, with my products. Um, <clears throat> so I decided that the whole 12 months would be less than a thousand dollars, which is 700. I'm not sure if you can see that. 777 dollars. But I also know that you might, if you're here, you might also like donors and planners. So Emma and I, we've been thinking of a second option that we can offer you. And for those of you who are in donors and planners, uh, donors and planners and um, in the other groups, you might not know about this either. We have decided, hey, why don't we do just like something crazy and do like an all access pass to everything? And I'm going to show you what everything means. So basically, you're not only going to learn how to launch on Amazon, which what this is about, but you'll also have access to our Juniors and Planners Pro, which is also 12 months coaching, helping you how to create the interiors, um, how to make the concepts, like how do you actually create these types of products? Um, you're going to get access to how to do print on demand. You're going to get access. I want to show you all of that because I'm really excited. Like, I feel like my team and I, we have, um, yeah, I'm just very excited about what we've been able to, to build over this year. So this is Genius and Planners Pro. We have many weekly calls and this is all about creating a general art planner and creating the content. So you have content coaching every week um, with Kari, our phenomenal content coach. Um, you are going to have coaching calls with me as well. So you have additional coaching calls just about creating journals and planners. You also get access to the KDP club, which is full access to learn how to do the print on demand part. So if you want to do, do the hybrid version, as I have done as well, from going from um, KDP to a physical planner, come, you know, um, have that as a funding method or have that as a way to, um, to just um, make sure that the idea is sound, to test it, to um, yeah, try it out. You also get access to all our mini memberships. So 2000 plus coloring book pages, templates that you can use. Also, um, this is like journaling's trend collection. So you get so many templates to like journals and planner pages that can help you build out your own so you, that you can, you know, come up with layouts and ideas. You also get access then to our trend scout. And the trend scout is basically every month I do research on Amazon and I find out what are people searching for? Like, what is the demand for journals, for planners, for notebooks, for activity books, for workbooks, like all types of different books. This you can use for KDP so you know what are people are actually searching for so that you create a product that is is searched for you know like what we were talking about like we need to have a market and one piece of that component is having demand search volume in our case and then the other part is seeing if they get sales that's something that you can see on amazon and with that you can find out ideas that are sound and that are going to make a lot more sense and have a market and um, you can also see what are new trends. You are up to date. You see what people are searching for on Amazon. And then basically you have all the different components that I needed throughout my whole journey. And as an all pass member, you do not only get, let's remove this. You do not only get 12 months, you actually get lifetime. And um, the lifetime all pass, all access pass um, does not cost 4,000, not 3,000. Like we decided it's just going to be 999. Like really total no brainer. Um, 
And I'm very excited about this because you, with that, get access to everything lifetime. Um, so highly recommend. I recommend you to join um, today. And no pressure, but I recommend you to stay, join today because um, on Thursday, if you join today, latest tomorrow, you will be able to have access to our ma um, manufacturing introduction. So our call with my manufacturer will be on Thursday. So if you join ahead of time, you will be able to join us right away and get all um, you know your questions answered around manufacturing and paper products. And you'll be able to, uh, you know, get going very quickly. Yes, this is all in US dollars. So it's the best offer that I've ever been able to offer. And basically with the all access, you get literally access to everything. And that everything includes truly all of the different components that it required me to get to the point where I am today. Oh, hold on, wrong way around, uh, like this. Because I used KDP, right? I used journals and planners um, in order to grow this. I also have other types of products as I've shown you, but similar approach, right? Like I want to create something of unique value unique selling point and all of that journals and planners um, KDP journals and planners and then supplementing growing more products and that's basically how I've done it having good manufacturing partners and then good sourcing agents like all of that I'm basically giving you access to the background of all of my business because these are all the people that I personally work with. Yeah. One of the sourcing agents is also part of my team. So it's um, all of that. Plus I also share behind the scenes. I'm currently launching a new Amazon account for a new product. And I'm also showing behind the scenes. So it's, it's basically really everything. <laughs> Um, so I highly recommend you to join. If you do have any questions, please feel free to ask them. Um, and I'm very happy to answer any questions. Um, I'm so clo close to launch resources on one-on-one -on -one coaching each week is probably the only way I'm actually going to get the things done. I get so overwhelmed and stuck and the calls give me accountability and help me move forward. I fully get you. I'm the same. Like if, like if I don't have some form of accountability, or I can talk with other people or I have a code. Like I, I really struggle otherwise getting the things done. Um, the co-working sessions that we do in here, they are not to be underestimated. They're so powerful as well. So imagine you can meet your your accountability partners, other members in the group, and you just need to work together. And like, like the biggest issue that most of us have is not that we have lack of information, is having lack of filtered information, basically know what really works because otherwise you can find everything on YouTube, but try to find it on YouTube and then do so much conflicting information, right? So that's one of the benefits, filtered, information and accountability because it's like going to the gym you know it's a lot like in theory we could all like we have everything at our fingertips but how difficult is it to really do the things and having other people to do it with make it so much easier um how often are the coaching calls in the different groups and are the group coaching calls live on zoom they're live on zoom and um, they're always replaced at different times because we have different time zones um not every week has the same amount of calls um we have one weekly call with carrie with me one weekly call for journal and planners and also we have a weekly call 
for the product launch school. For the product launch school, I am, however, going to do something different. I want to test something out. And that is three calls a week, one implementation a week. Implementation is where we all focus mainly on implementation because often we can also, and I, me included, get stuck in just like analyzing, planning, and so on. And then, you know, using that to not take actual steps. So we will have implementation week every week. Like I have a very strong focus on implementation because implementation is what is in the way between you and your future self that has achieved your goals. Mm. Do you cover how to build a separate brand with different Amazon brands too? Yes, I talk about that as well. And in any of the Q&As too, you can ask these type of questions. I don't focus the... Um, the course on that because that's not like um, the main uh, focus of the brands to build um, multiple brands but I talk about that because I'm building multiple brands I however recommend starting one after the other um, do you have to do KDP no you don't have to it's totally optional to do KDP it can be very beneficial it can be a, an additional source of income so that is very beneficial um, but it's not required and it's not only a, a, an additional source of income it can also be a way to you know test out your concept print it out you can use it just as a printing way like there's so many different ways that you can benefit from kdp but it's not very um required or can you do private label straight yeah you can do straight away private labeling it is going to depend on your budget if you already come with a budget, you, you're not required to do KDP. It can help you, but it's you can right away go into your product. All calls are recorded. Another question I have. Um, existing journals published a few years ago on KDP. Can I get support for ads and marketing on, and possibly even manufacturing it also? Yeah, in the coaching calls, you can get support for that. And um, we can analyze and look at your journals that you have we can look at the ads um, in a lot of these coaching calls I tend to you know either I ask you to share your screen and then we will do it together so we are very um, action orientated in those coaching calls uh, really open enrollment later during the year um, I'm not sure if I will open an all um, access pass um it is going to close oh and i hope i'm getting this right now on the 29th of december is the last day that you can join um and i don't know when i will open or so i don't want to do any predictions um but as of now it's until the 29th and if you want to join for um the call with the manufacturer on thursday then make sure to join um, before beforehand ideally today um, latest tomorrow but um, ideally today because the team has to organize then and make sure to get you in um, um, into the new um, call um, what will you do if we find that someone has copied our journal 70 90 percent um, and sell it under their own brand that is the risk that we run i also run a tremendous risk by showing my own journals and planners um here to for example to a crowd that plans to do something like this this is the risk that that we sometimes take i have a personal belief however that copycats that's it's a short-term approach um it's and short-term approaches can blind one. And I don't think that that is going to make them succeed in the long run. Passion and doing something with conviction and doing it honestly, like with honesty and integrity yourself, is going to get you forward no matter what other people will do. Um, so I just believe very deeply in that. Um, and I believe in abundance so much because... <clears throat> 
I could also say, well, this is a, such a good industry. I could just keep it to myself, right? Not share it to, um, with anyone. But I don't believe that um, if you, like I'm launching a shadow work, journey. like I don't even believe that if you launch one that you, that, Uh, it's a bad thing that now you're my competitor and I need to watch out. No, there's room. Like Amazon has 48 spots on the first page. I'd rather have someone that I know win than a stranger. So might as well one of my students be winning alongside with me. So I think that's nice. And also it's nice to have a community and be able to share all of these things together. Entrepreneurship can sometimes be a lonely route. So it is nice to have similar interest with other people yeah i missed the offer can you repeat it i can't read the board oh sorry yes of course so the product learn school is all about launching your first product on amazon and it includes a full course community it's a 12-month group coaching um it includes calls with me also with um one of my team members who is an ads experts um ah i'd totally forgot to mention that we also will uh, have calls um with trademark lawyer sourcing agent um and a, a couple of other people along the way um there are two options either you join just a product loan school for 777 or you get the all pass access for 999 that means that you get access to every program that I currently run that is the KDP club and you get all like you get lifetime access so that means it's not limited to 12 months it's a lifetime access as long as I run this and as long as I do this um, it includes general planners pro which on its own is $97 a month you get that for free in addition The club is $49 a month. You get that for free in addition. You get all the mini memberships, uh, which if I calculate that, I don't know, it's another 20 something a month. Like getting this option, you get like so much uh, on top and it includes all the different components because that's where you learn in detail how to create journals and planners. It also applies to cards. You can have the same process for cards um, or any type of paper product. <clears throat> You learn how to do the KDP part, so the print-on-demand part. Um, you get access to 2,000-plus coloring book templates. I don't know how many, 1,200, I think, journal and planner templates that you can use to brainstorm um, different layouts and find the right layout for you and different content ideas as well. Plus, you get access to my monthly Amazon um, demand report so where I look at different journals notebooks workbooks activity books word searches and all of these different type, paper types products um, and I look for what are people searching for and I do the research for you so you get access to everything um, for the all with all pass <clears throat> yeah um, the all pass is payment in full only Yes, um, the product loan school, there is a $97 a month option. Um, but everything else, um, especially for the all pass, it's uh, paid in full. Yeah, and in order to join the, the call on Thursday with the manufacturer, you would have to join in full as well. Um, So there are weekly calls and tasks set. Um, they're not like specific tasks for each week, but you have access to the membership portal where you can look at the different tasks that you want to do. People are going to be in different stages and I don't want to pressure people too much to be all at the same point of time. But we have coaching calls where you can ask any question. You can also ask to be in a hot seat. Basically, let's say, Laura, I can't find an idea can you help me find an idea we can look at an idea we can validate it on amazon i can go through all the different steps um, with you and not only you will benefit but people that watch will also benefit through learning through you um, so yeah if you do kdp can you use a ghost 
writer to de develop your journal planner for you in order to save time? Yeah, of course. Um, absolutely. I don't develop everything myself. Um, and I do work with other people together within my team. Um, and I also, we also sometimes um, outsource. And we also talk a lot about AI, the use of AI and how it can aid us. It should not write it for us. I don't believe in that, but I think it can help us have a really good skeleton and some meat already. And then we can rewrite it, work on it. We can have proofreader can just work on it. And I do so many cool things that we can do and being resourceful. Mm. Is it possible to create a journal with no experience if you're not especially creative with a coach? Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. There's n you can do it. Yes, everyone can. Um, I appreciate your outlook on competition. competition. Yeah, I, I deeply believe in that. And I also believe that good intentions come back. You, like, if you do things with integrity and good intentions, I believe that no matter who tries to rip you off or who's like, it's always going to happen. But I don't bother thinking about that because it's not going to benefit me because most people are actually good. I find that very few people will actually do that. And those that do, they usually don't succeed very long. And then, you know, I'd be like, ha ha. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> you tried, but no. <laughs> Next time go the honest road. How I don't know, but I don't I don't feel like it it bothers me necessarily. Yeah, my manufacturer was actually surprised, like Laura, why are you sharing it with everyone how you do this? And I'm like, why not? Like I I would like to have just my students everywhere in Amazon. Like, how cool would that be? <laughs> and actually there are quite a few already out there. So um tomorrow I want to share. I've actually kind of forgot to do that today i want to share with you some of examples because i want to show you how others have done it as well and what the results are uh, i just briefly shared that here i think 42 sales 47 sales something like that uh yesterday and the days before was pretty similar i think 30 sales 20 sales 37 sales. like she's uh doing well Khadija, I'm very happy, very, very happy. Um, do you have a link to a sales page that we can look at today? Oh, yeah, of course. I didn't. <laughs> yeah. Um, sorry, I can sometimes um, get so excited that I miss um, the obvious part of sharing this, the, the actual sales page. <laughs> Uh, thank you for pointing it out. So um, this is the sales page, the product loan school. Turn your passions and ideas into products that create income on autopilot. And I love the autopilot part. At the end of the session, we can actually look at how many sales we got. Last time we checked, it was 6,000. I bet that in the last two hours, we've got quite a few sales. And I didn't do anything on my Amazon account. You just saw me talking to you. And I was doing something I enjoy doing. Um, and we will have a look. And that's what I mean with autopilot. That's what I mean what is so powerful. Because like, even if I'm like, and touch on wood, I don't want to be sick. But like, let's imagine I'm sick a week or so. That's not going to change anything on Amazon. Like, I could actually take a month off if I wanted to. Um, and that would not make a difference. Um, a lot of my time these days are actually spending on the coaching process. I I like, I enjoy um, teaching, even though sometimes I get a bit nervous when I talk in front of people, but I still enjoy it. And I, I really enjoy seeing when people take action and when they share, when they have their products launched. And that's, that's really touching because I wish that I would have, like, I wish I would have met someone that would do something like this a few years ago that I could learn from, from at a price that is, you know, still um, accessible because a lot of these type of courses are usually $5,000 or even more, right? Um, and 
I would have really, really enjoyed that. It would have totally changed it. Okay, so um, I kind of went over this. These are the different faces, but I already showed you behind the scenes um, what it looks like. So it's an internal um, file. That's where we organize all the lessons that we are um, making accessible. So it really includes everything that you need to know. And you can just pick and choose whatever topic that you need to be talking, uh, like looking at um, to help you through the process. Um, so we have it in three different phases. I also have a bit of a behind the scenes. And um, you can either access that, um, you can access all the bonuses that comes with it, or you get the all access pass, which I would recommend you because the all access pass, that's when you get everything, the product, non school, journals and planners, the KDP membership, the coloring books, the journaling trends, and the KDP trend scout club. <clears throat> So everything in here. Um, here we do have a few examples. Stephanie has done so well. Um, so these are actually last year numbers. This year I should have shown it in comparison. Maybe I can uh, show it tomorrow in comparison. But I think, um, yeah, I, I have to check it. But I think it's tripled or so um, or more. Stephanie's doing very well on Amazon. So she's also doing journals. Um, planners mostly. Um, here is Kristen and Sarah. They have launched a travel journal and in seven days they got almost $8,000 in sales with a travel journal that just launched I think end of October or early November. Very, very quickly and um, those sales were it's already a few weeks ago. They already ran out of stock because <laughs> they sold out. So they sold a total of $25,000 worth in sales um, in a matter of just a few weeks. And that was because the idea was, you know, researched well. The content was done nicely. It has really good reviews. Yeah. Um, also, Nicole, she had her own passion product. She is... Um, um, it is a beauty product because she has a beauty salon and um, it went very quickly as well. Um, so she, uh, um, she in the matter of 60 days, she had her first $2,500 per week and then it grew to a, like almost hitting $1,000 a day. Uh, in sales getting to almost 5,000 in seven days like growing really really quickly um, with her own passion product <clears throat> and here are some different examples I've worked with lots of different people um, over the time and this is the very best offer I've ever offered um, and I'm very excited for it I think 2024 is going to be pretty, pretty cool. <laughs> and I'm ex excited. Um, can we get feedback from a coach on what we have done or is it mostly collaborative feedback in a shared group? Um, I, I'm not sure I understand the question. I would give feedback directly um, in a group setting. Um, I don't do, I don't offer any one-on-one -on -one um, coaching or done for you or done with you coaching um, anymore at this time I decided to uh, focus more on um, my family as well and traveling next year I'll be traveling a lot and doing group coaching still you know allows me to do that and um, I I have fun coaching you but one-on-one -on -one is and I hope I didn't misunderstand the question but I don't do one-on-one -on -one. but you can get one-on-one -on -one feedback in the group calls and you can be in the hot seat and um, we can all interact in the group as well. <clears throat> uh, I think the amount of content in you as a coach is a remarkable value to be honest. Thank you so much. That's thank you. <laughs> Very kind to say. Uh, I would love to join the all access. I have to go now to reach out 
to you by DM later. Thank you for some great training. Thank you. Um, just the content we've seen so far shows just how valuable the full program must be. Thank you. I, I really hope that I was able to, to show you. And we're not done yet. You know, tomorrow is still another day um, that we are going to, um, you know, do more. <laughs> We're talking more about the Amazon launch. Um, is there a recommended roadmap to follow in the all access? Um, good idea. We can we can create one. Yes. Um, so basically, uh, what to use when in which scenario? Awesome idea. Um, we don't have one yet, but we will work on one. Um, um, excellent. You answered perfectly. If anyone has any doubts i'm in all laura's um, programs and they're amazing there is always so much content and support available i feel confident and empowered to just create and i love it oh thank you so much <laughs> so kind uh, i get so much value from being on the group calls i learn from the other people asking questions and being coached and it's been so valuable to get direct answers and feedbacks from laura and her team Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. The roadmap would be very helpful. Yes, very happy to do that. Um, I think that's a phenomenal idea. And I love when you um, ladies give me uh, like feedback on things that you would find helpful because that makes it a lot easier for us as well to say like, oh, cool, we didn't think of that, but that's a an, an <laughs> great idea. Uh, let's do this. Um, this feels right. Perfect timing for me. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so excited to, to see you join um, and have you come and, um, yeah, we work together next 2024. <laughs> thank you. I'm joining All Access and can't wait. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so thankful you tagged me. Well, I'm very thankful that you're here. I'm very excited about this all and um, if you have any additional questions or anything that you're not sure about feel free to um, to ask the questions um, tomorrow we are going to be um, talking a little bit more about the whole Amazon launching site and um, what we want to be preparing for have you seen um the the goodies you really want to open your emails every time we send them because there's really a lot of freebies and and i don't like the word freebie actually because freebie sometimes makes it seem like there's not a lot of value in it but actually there's a lot of value like we put so much thought and work <laughs> in creating um the the freebies or the goodies or how yeah the goodies <laughs> um and I highly recommend, like, we, tomorrow we have uh, a full set of really cool templates to create an awesome standout listing. We're going to be talking a lot about, like, the components to make a successful listing. Like, what sells? Like, how can we make something sell well? So we're going to be talking about what is necessary. And please open all of the goodies and workbooks and everything that we're sending you because it really includes so much and today it also includes um, 20 plus Alibaba alternatives for around the world so let's say you want to produce something made out of leather and you want to have it done in Italy there's a resource a website where you can find that on one of the goodies um, we do have a sourcing sheet um, we have calculation sheets. We have all sorts of cheat sheets. Like the amount of things that we're sending you, we really want you to get um, get this happening and going. And um, so I hope that you're looking at them. <laughs> um, the goodies are so amazing. I kept thinking that they could be paid products on their own. Thank you so much. <laughs> I appreciate all the information. Looking forward to watching the replay and joining tomorrow. So looking forward to tomorrow getting eyes on my offerings. It's always my number one challenge. And I'm sure great listings are a huge step 
in the right direction. Yes, it does make such a difference. I'm going to share also um, about failed launches of mine that were failed launches until I just changed the freaking listing. <laughs> and then it turned out very well. The listing sometimes does not really represent the product very well. And um, I've experienced it a few times as well with customers, with clients that I've worked one-on-one -on -one with, where the product was really great, but somehow it was just like not selling um, enough. And then we just had to make a few tweaks and then suddenly it took off. Um, one of those customers um, actually was Stephanie, where you saw a screenshot of her sales. Like we had to like tweak a little bit the images until we figured it out. And I want to share with you tomorrow, like what, what we've learned and one of the key mindsets that we need to have, that there's no black and white thinking of like, oh, this failed, this, this didn't work. That doesn't exist, right? <laughs> no failing exists. It just means that, ah, oh, there's some tweaking I need to do. <laughs> um, Laura, is the group only for people that are totally new? Mm, no, I wouldn't say so because I still follow exactly the same process um, step by step to do exactly the same thing. Like I'm just sharing what I truly do and I also share behind the scenes. And if you've already been doing this and you've experienced, you will equally be benefiting from it. Um, you will have a different um, perspective, maybe a different approach, um, um, different way to research your products, different way to manufacture. You will get contact to vetted manufacturers. That on its own, it's already worth so much. Um, I've once worked with, um, not sure how it's called, like a sourcing consultant, not like an agent, course, like a consulting company. And just to be introduced to a manufacturer, 7,000 euro. That's how much it's worth to be introduced to a really good manufacturer. Like that alone, like just the, my contacts, I could be charging thousands of dollars because it took me years to find them, a lot of failures, a lot of like um, black sheep <laughs> that uh, I had to kind of learn through losing money um, until I found like the really good manufacturers that did it well. So that alone um, is worth it. Um, also, if you're already experienced and have done this before. Um, so I highly, I think that this is easy enough for a beginner to understand, but still valuable enough for someone who's been doing this before and has done that. Um, <clears throat> and then, I mean, let's say you're already selling on Amazon, for example, um, Ivan, he manages millions and millions of dollars and he's, this man is very creative. <laughs> with his um, ads. I know my fair thing about Amazon ads, but I still want him to do the ads coaching because in order to be an expert, you need to hyper-focus on it. And I am i wouldn't consider myself an ads expert because that's not the only thing I do. Um, and that's the only thing he does. So he is uh, a better expert in Amazon ads than I would be because I focus on production and other things as well. Um, so that alone, like having him go through your ads, like him doing it and you having to pay him would cost you two, three hundred dollars. And then in one of these calls, you could just do it. <laughs> I mean, that alone is uh, is worth the whole thing <laughs> um, if you experience. So yeah. Um, I appreciate all the information. Looking forward to watching the replay and joining tomorrow. Ah, yeah. I'm sorry. I already read that, I think. Ah, oh, no. Oh, did I? Yes. Um, yes. Will he look at KDP ads too? He will. And he's been doing very well with KDP actually too. So he manages an KDP account um, of, uh, I don't know. Uh, a guy that does, um, um, I'm missing the word. It's not the same as we are doing. So it's like children's books, but it's also KDP. And he's been able to do so, so well. It's freaking unbelievable. That um, that book is making around four to 5,000 
a week in um, royalties, which is pretty fantastic. And a lot has to do with the ads that he's managing. Um, so yeah, he's pretty, he's, he's a really cool guy. He's a, he's a young guy from, um, he's originally from Ukraine. He moved um, to, uh, to Spain a few years ago and he's, he's a really nice guy. Uh, very smart, super smart. Um, he, and he thinks very much outside of the box and he's not limited by, by beliefs that limit him. Like he will just test different things. He said he once tested like a three cent bit to see, and usually no one in PPC would ever do that. And he started doing three cent bits and they started to work. So he then started getting sales for three cents. <laughs> he was just, he does, he's so smart about it. <laughs> So I really like um, like it. Um, I had some success with them last year, but looking to start them again. Awesome. That's amazing for KDP royalties. I would say so, yeah. Four to 5,000 a week in KDP royalties is pretty fantastic. <laughs> uh, I, I, I like that. That's a nice number. Um, so yeah, he will... He will focus mostly on the product loan school, but he will occasionally also do some a KDP call. Uh, I've I've already been in touch with him, and in January that's when we are going to do the calls and everything like that. Um, okay, wonderful. Let me know if you have any other questions. Um, if you're all good, um, and then I would say I'll see you tomorrow. Um, any question about the product loan school, about different um, options, feel free to ask me or Emma. Um, Emma is also able to answer any questions about the programs if you're not sure about it. Um, and then I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Um, and yeah, cool. Awesome. Well, then... Uh, I one more question is here. Is it a full payment only for the all access? Yes, full payment only. Um, that's when you get a all time access lifetime. 777 is for 12 months, but there is a monthly option, $97 a month option. Um, there is. For the all access, there is only um the pay in full option because that's already a massive deal on its own <clears throat> but yeah here there is um i yeah 97 dollars a month <clears throat> <Thank you soon. laughs> thank you for your time laura thank you all for coming um and i look forward to seeing you all any questions come into the dms about the program if you have questions about the content always bring it into the group so everyone else can also see it. Wonderful. Thank you so much and talk to you tomorrow. Bye.